Okay, so I just want to start the video by saying that this tutorial actually assumes that you have a command handler for your Discord bot. Now, essentially what this command is going to do is it's going to allow you to call the command and send a username or gamer tag, and it'll then reply with an embed that stores all the user stats as such. Now, this command will work for multiple games, and you can kind of choose which games you want it to work for and how many of that you do. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to be using a template for the actual command itself that I'll leave in the description below. And the first thing you want to do is you want to actually install Puppeteer, which is what we're going to be using. And to do so, we'll use the command npm Puppeteer, and I'll leave this in the description as well. And you want to click enter and I'll start the download. Okay, so once we've installed Puppeteer, the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the user actually provided a username or gamer tag for us to actually search the stats for. So to do this, we can just check if the first argument in our string args or whatever you named it in your command handler is blank. And if it is, all we want to do is we want to simply alert the user that they forgot to actually send a name and then we're going to return it. Now, after that, since we'll know for a fact that we then actually have a username to actually at least attempt to look for, we're going to now declare two variables. The first one is going to be the URL of the website that we're going to be scraping information off of. And the second one is the name of the user, which is going to be equal to the first argument in the string that we send to the command. Okay, so the next step is to create a couple if statements that'll check the name of the text channel that we actually sent the command to to determine which website to actually gather the information from. So the next thing is we're going to create an if statement that will check for each channel that we want to create this embed for. So for an example, if our Discord bot is going to be able to get the stats off of like the game Call of Duty or Rainbow Six, we'll create two if statements, one for Rainbow Six and one for Call of Duty. And they'll look something like this. So we'll just check if the channel.name is equal to, for an example, for Call of Duty, we'll do Call of Duty like such. And then we'll also check for the channel name being Rainbow Six, since our command will be able to do these two. Now, if you want multiple games, like more than two, you can literally just do the same thing. And this should be an else if. You can do multiple games if you want, or you could just do one, it's up to you. I'm kind of using this if statement method, so that way you can add multiple games into the same command. Now, once you're done adding all the games you want, you're gonna create an else statement. And in this else statement, we're gonna be returning and a line before it, we're going to say that this command is not accessible here because this else statement will only apply if it's in a game that doesn't have the command working for it. So we can just say this command does not work here. Inside the if statements that actually have the games that we're getting the stats for, we want to be creating a function call. And so for example, for Call of Duty, we could just do COD stats and it's going to be passing through the URL. For this example, I'm only going to be showing how to do one of them, and you can just apply the same process over and over for the other games. Okay, so once we have all the if statements finished, now we're going to be creating a function for every game that we want to get the stats for. So for an example, if you have two games, you're going to need to make two functions. If you have three, you'll need to make three. And if you only have one, then you only have to make one. So it's going to be an async function and can be whatever you called it. So for an example, I called mine COD stats, and it's going to be passing through the URL. Okay, so the first thing I want to do inside this function is we want to go ahead and declare the value of the URL. So we're going to be calling our variable and we're going to be changing the value of it to be equal to the URL of the website as such. But we're going to replace where the gamer tag is and we are going to go ahead and just replace that with the user variable that we declared at the top over here. The next step to actually getting the information is going to be to kind of navigate through the website and determine where each piece of information is. And we can do this by using XPath. So the first thing is we're going to want to create a variable. And for an example, I want to get the KD stat of this user. We're going to do KD XPath, and we're going to make it equal to another string. And in order to get the XPath of, for an example, the KD, which is right here, we're going to right click, we're going to inspect, and then we're going to go ahead and hover over the value we want. We're going to click it. And we're going to right click the highlighted area in this little console area here. And we're going to click copy XPath. And then we're just going to simply paste that over here. Okay, so once you've gotten the XPath for every single piece of information you want to extract from the site, we're then going to be visiting the site with Puppeteer. So in order to do this, we're going to be using const browser is equal to await Puppeteer. Oh, I did not spell that right. Puppeteer launch as such. The next thing is you want to load the page and we can do that by creating a constant called page and it is going to await the browser 
new page. Lastly, we want to wait for the page to actually navigate to the URL. And then the moment that happens, we can actually begin gathering the information. So the next thing is going to be to declare a variable called data type. And we're going to be using this later on in this function. Okay, so the next step is going to be to actually gather the information given the pathing and then convert it into something that JavaScript can read. So for this, I'll be using an example of getting the user's KD. So I'll call this get KD. And so the first thing is we're going to be creating a constant called element. And then it is going to be using the X path of since we got it up top here, we're going to be using KD's X path. The next line is going to be to define the data type that it's going to be. And since this is text, we'll be using a text property for this. And it's going to be uh, text content here. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to create a variable that's going to actually store the information that we just got. So it's going to be let KD is equal to await data type dot JSON value. Now, after this, we'll get that value to be stored in this variable. So we would want to repeat this step for every single step. Now, in order to do this the second time, the only difference is that instead of this being just element, it's gonna be element two, and then we need to change that here as well. And since the next that I have here is wins, and it ends up being a text as well, we're not gonna have any other problems, and this one will work fine. Now, the next one that we would do is, I'll do profile picture just because it's a little different. So for this to work, what we actually need to do is everything else needs to be changed the same way the other ones were changed. But instead of this being text content, this should be SRC. And then once you have that, everything will work just fine. Once you finish collecting all the data by creating these three lines for every single piece of data you want, then we can go on to actually creating the embed itself. Now, one thing I do want to note is that in this case, when we're extracting the level, it actually has text here. So in order to remove the word level from the string itself, we're going to be using the substring function and we're going to input five since level is five letters. Now, the next thing is going to be to create a string called output. And this is essentially just going to be equal to all of the information that we've gathered. So, far. so the first thing I would typically add is I add the name of the user. And since we actually got the user before, we don't have to worry about getting that from the website. The next thing I would do is I would get the user's KD since that is the first that I'm trying to gather. And so you could do it as such. And then I would fill this information out for the rest of the stats that I'm trying to gather. Okay, so after finishing the output variable, the next thing you want to do is you want to create an embed that actually sends to the channel. Now, there's multiple ways of doing this. I personally prefer sending all the information to a function to actually create it. But if you want to just create the embed here, you're more than welcome. Now, the way I would do it is I'm going to create a function called create embed. And what it's going to do is it's going to pass through the profile picture and the output. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually create this function here. So inside of this function, the first thing you want to do is you want to create a constant called tracker embed or whatever you want to call your embed. And it's going to be equal to the new discord dot message embed, which can be done like such. And do not add a semicolon because we're not done adding to this line. I'm just going to be creating this to look a little nicer. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to set the title and this can be equal to whatever you want. So personally, I'm going to add the user plus tracker and I'm going to add a little space here. The next thing we want to do is we want to set the description and this is going to be equal to output, which is a variable that we passed through previously. And this is what actually has the important information that we're looking for. Now, the next thing we want to do is you want to go ahead and set the thumbnail of the actual embed. And this is why personally chose to grab a profile picture or an image. You don't have to do this. This is up to you. The main important part is just setting the description. Now, if you want to actually set an image, you can do so like such. And then if you also want to set back to the URL, so that way they can click it if they need more information, you can do so just like that. And then you can also set the color if you choose to. That's up to you. I don't think you have to. I kind of just do it because it looks a little neater. And I usually go with the default blue, which I think this is the code for it. And then after that, we can just simply end the creation of the uh, embed and we can reply to the message with the embed itself. Now, once you've actually created the embed function and you've made sure everything works just fine with a working username, we're actually going to add kind of like a mini fail safe just in case the user actually ends up entering a, a gamer tag that doesn't exist. Now, in order to do this, we're going to add a try statement at the very beginning here. 
and we're going to end it right after the embed is created. And then we're going to create a catch statement, which will catch any error. And it'll just reply and say that the user does not exist. Now, the reason why we're adding this after we've written all the code rather than at the beginning is because while you're testing for it, it won't tell you any errors that you're actually getting. So this way we can determine any errors that are just on our end before the error just ends up being that the user doesn't exist. Now, with that being said, that pretty much concludes creating the actual command itself. Now, you can make other options if you want to change the text or to make it look a little nicer, but that's honestly all up to you guys.